Welcome, dear listeners, to another episode of the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast, where we explore the transformative power of prayer. Have you ever felt like your prayers were just hitting the ceiling and not reaching the presence of God? I'm excited about this new series of podcasts. Welcome to the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast, a podcast about becoming 1% better every day. And now your host, yours truly, Clarence Stores. Hey everyone, this is Clarence E. Stores Jr., host of the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast, a podcast about becoming 1% better every day so that you can level up in all areas of life. And I'm excited about this new series of podcasts. For those who are listening, know or may not know, I am a pastor. I pastor the Mars Hill Baptist Church of Chicago. We call ourselves Mars Hill Anywhere. And that's reflected in our digital approach in the revamping of our church app. And that app we nicknamed Church in Your Pocket. From there, you can access our sermons, our teachings, our calendar, and Bible reading, and be kept abreast as to what's happening in and around Mars Hill. The interviews I've scheduled have been on point, real, relevant, and raw. You're going to hear from some incredible leaders, both within the church as well as outside, to share their perspective on how we navigate not our new normal, but as Tom Rayner says, our new reality. Hello and welcome to the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast, where we focus on practical insights and inspiring stories to help you grow spiritually, professionally, and Personally, I'm Clarence E. Stores Jr., and I'm thrilled to have you join me today. In today's podcast, we dive into a variety of topics designed to empower you on your journey of faith, uh, professionalism, and perhaps leadership. Whether you're navigating the challenges of your personal life, seeking deeper spiritual growth, or simply looking for encouragement. This podcast is here to support you in every step of the way. In each uh, segment of this episode, we will explore real life stories, practical advice that you can apply directly uh, to your daily life. And uh, we emphasize the importance of, of integrating faith in our busy lives. I understand that balancing work, family, and uh, personal growth can be challenging. That's why I am excited to offer you a special resource that's complements of this podcast, my free ebook, Faith on the Fly, a practical Guide to Spiritual Growth for Busy Professionals. Now, this ebook is packed with practical tips and strategies to help you grow spiritually, even with the hectic schedule. It's designed to be a quick and easy read, offering insights that you can implement right away. Whether you're looking to deepen your prayer life, find more time for reflection, or simply stay connected to your faith throughout the week, Faith on the Fly has got you covered. To get this free ebook, to get your free copy of this ebook, simply check today's show notes. That's it. It's my gift to you as a token of appreciation for being a part of our podcast community. Welcome, dear listeners, to another episode of the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast, where we explore the transformative power of prayer. Have you ever felt like your prayers were just hitting the ceiling and not reaching the presence of God? Well, today's hosts, my AI hosts, Tom McGinnis and Tasha McBride, explore praying 
with confidence, boldness, and expectation, assuring us that our prayers are heard and can bring about powerful change in our lives. So find a comfortable space, grab your favorite beverage and something to write with and write on, get comfortable, and let's take a deep dive into my book, Bold Prayers, How to Pray with Confidence and Expectation. Let's discuss how we can all learn to pray boldly and expectantly. Let's go inside. Ever feel like your prayers are just hitting the ceiling? Like you're talking, but not really being heard? Yeah. Today we're diving into Bold Prayers. How to pray with confidence and expectation Mm -hmm. to explore how our prayers can become something much stronger than just just wishful whispers. You know, it's interesting you say that about prayers hitting the ceiling. Yeah. Because this book actually starts by acknowledging that very feeling. Yeah. It validates that sense of doubt or even fear that many people experience when they think about praying for something big. So it's not just me then. Right. That's kind of comforting, actually. Mm -hmm. But if it's not about being loud or demanding, what does this book mean by bold prayer? It revolves around two key elements, um, confidence and expectancy. Okay. And it's not blind faith either. Okay. The book makes a, a clear distinction there. It's about understanding and truly believing in the power of prayer, but also coupling that with a genuine expectation of a response. That's intriguing. Does the book elaborate on why approaching prayer with expectation might lead to different results? Sure. What's the thinking there? Well, it suggests that when you pray with expectation, you're aligning your heart and mind with the possibility of the answer. Uh. It's like planting a seed. You do it with the confident expectation that it will grow. Okay. It's not about forcing God's hand, but about positioning yourself to receive what he wants to give. Okay, that makes sense. Like we become more receptive to the answer Mm. when our hearts are truly open to receiving it. Mm -hmm. But do you have an example of what this, um, this confident expectation might look like in practice? Absolutely. The book actually points to Jesus himself as a model of bold prayer. In Mark 11.24, he says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. This wasn't just a suggestion. It was a declaration rooted in unwavering faith. That's a powerful example. It really highlights how impactful bold prayer can be. Yeah. But I imagine some listeners might be thinking, that's great for Jesus, but how do I actually do that in my own life? You're right. Right. It's one thing to admire the concept, but another to live it out. And that's where the book gets really practical. Okay. It shares some amazing real life stories of individuals who experience the power of bold prayer firsthand. Like what, for instance? One story that really resonated with me was about a single mother facing eviction. She was at her wit's end, feeling completely lost and alone. But instead of resigning herself to the situation, she chose to pray boldly for a solution. What happened? Well, she ended up connecting with a local charity that provided her with the resources and support she needed to get back on her feet. Wow. It wasn't just about finding a new home. It was about experiencing the love and provision of a community that she didn't even know was there. Wow. It's a powerful reminder that sometimes the answer comes in unexpected ways, but it often starts with that bold step of faith. That's incredible. It really shows that bold prayer isn't just about getting what we want, but about opening ourselves up to possibilities we might not even be aware of. But these stories, while inspiring, can sometimes feel a bit out of reach. You know, like that's great for them, but how do I learn to pray like that? You're absolutely right. It's easy to get caught up in the wow factor of these stories and miss the practical application for our own lives. And the book doesn't shy away from that. It actually provides really tangible steps to help cultivate this boldness in your own prayer life. So it's not some mystical experience only accessible to a select few. Not at all. It's about aligning yourself with the principles of faith and expectation. And one of the key things the book suggests is really diving into scripture. That makes a lot of sense. But how does studying the Bible actually help with bold prayer? Imagine you're about to embark on a journey to a new and unfamiliar place. Wouldn't you want to study a map beforehand? That's what scripture does for our prayer life. By deepening our understanding of biblical teachings, we gain a better understanding of who God is, how he operates, and what he's promised. 
It gives us a foundation for our faith and helps us pray with greater confidence and clarity. So instead of coming to God with a vague sense of need, we come with a clearer picture of his character and promises, which then shapes our prayers. Exactly. It's about grounding our requests in his word and aligning ourselves with his will. And that alignment is essential for bold prayer. But it's not just about studying on our own. The book also emphasizes the importance of seeking guidance. Guidance from whom? From spiritual mentors or trusted individuals in our lives who can offer wisdom and support on our faith journey. Okay. Think of them as experienced hikers who can guide you along the path, offering insights and encouragement based on their own experiences. That's a great analogy. Yeah. It reminds me that we don't have to navigate this journey alone. But how do we know who the right people are to guide us? What should we be looking for in their advice? That's a great question and one we'll unpack after a quick break. Are you tired of feeling like your prayers aren't being heard? Do you long for a deeper connection with God? One where you pray with unwavering confidence and expectation? In his new book, Bold Prayers, How to Pray with Confidence and Expectation, Pastor Clarence E. Stores Jr. provides practical guidance and personal insights to transform your prayer life. This isn't just another book on prayer. It's a guide to unlocking a new level of intimacy with God. He shares biblical and historical examples, showing how praying with boldness led to powerful breakthroughs in his own life. He provides practical tips and biblical foundations for approaching prayer with a new sense of confidence and expectancy. Ready to experience the transformative power of bold prayer? Visit Amazon today and order your copy of Bold Prayers. It's time to stop whispering your prayers and start boldly declaring them knowing that God is listening and eager to answer. We'll be right back with more on how to strengthen your prayer life on the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. So before the break, we were talking about the importance of seeking guidance from spiritual mentors. Right. I think this is something a lot of people, myself included, might struggle with. Sure. How do we know who the right people are to guide us in our prayer journey? Yeah. What should we be looking for? In their advice. You're right. It's a crucial aspect of spiritual growth, but can feel daunting. Yeah. Think about it this way. When you're looking for guidance in any area of life, you probably wouldn't just ask anyone. Right. You'd seek out someone with experience, wisdom, and whose values resonate with yours. So in this case, it would be someone who has a strong prayer life themselves. Yeah. Someone who has walked the path and can offer insights based on their own experiences. Precisely. Okay. Look for people who embody the qualities you aspire to in your own prayer life. Okay. Individuals who radiate faith who demonstrate humility and compassion, and who are committed to their own spiritual growth. That makes sense. Yeah. And what about their advice? Sure. How do we know if it's sound advice? Always weigh their guidance against the teachings of Scripture. Okay. Does it align with the character of God and His promises? Does it point you towards a deeper relationship with Him? So it's not just about blindly accepting what someone tells us. Right. Right but using our own discernment yeah. and testing it against the foundation of our faith. Absolutely. A good spiritual mentor will encourage your own exploration of faith, not try to dictate your journey. Mm -hmm. They'll empower you to hear God's voice for yourself. That's reassuring. Yeah. It's not about finding someone with all the answers, but someone who can walk alongside us and help us find those answers mm -hmm. within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And speaking of finding answers within ourselves, the book also talks about the importance of cultivating gratitude. Yes. Gratitude is so powerful. Yeah. It shifts our perspective from a place of lack to a place of abundance. Can you elaborate on that? How does being grateful actually impact our prayers? Well, imagine going to God with a laundry list of needs, mm -hmm. constantly focused on what you're lacking. Yeah. It can create a sense of desperation, almost like you're trying to bargain with him. But when you approach him with a heart full of gratitude, acknowledging all the blessings he's already poured into your life, it changes the entire dynamic. It's like instead of coming from a place of I need, we come from a place of thank you. Exactly. Oh, okay. It's about recognizing that he's already giving, already loving, already working in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that recognition fosters a spirit of humility and trust, which are essential for bold prayer. That's a beautiful way to put it. Yeah. It's about shifting our focus from what we don't have to what we do have. Right. 
and recognizing that even in the midst of challenges, there's always something to be grateful for. Precisely. Yeah. And that shift in perspective can be incredibly empowering. Okay. It allows us to approach prayer not as beggars, but as beloved children coming to a generous father. Now, one thing that really struck me about this book was its emphasis on prayer as a partnership with God. Mm -hmm. It's not just a one-way street where we're sending requests up to heaven and hoping for the best. That's such a crucial point. The book really emphasizes that collaborative aspect of prayer, oh, oh. encouraging us to move beyond simply presenting a wish list and hoping for the best. So how do we practically cultivate that sense of partnership in our prayer life? Right. How do we move beyond just talking at God and actually engage in a dialogue? It begins with recognizing God as an active participant in our lives, not some distant entity we only engage with during formal prayer times. Okay. It's about inviting him into the everyday moments, seeking his guidance in our decisions, and being open to his whispers of wisdom throughout the day. So it's about recognizing that he's present and active, even when we don't see immediate or tangible answers to our prayers. Absolutely. Okay. It's about trusting that he's working behind the scenes even when we don't understand the how or the why. That could be tough though, right? Sure. Especially when we're facing difficult situations or when it feels like our prayers aren't being answered the way we want. Mm -hmm. How do we maintain that sense of partnership when doubt creeps in? It's certainly not always easy. And the book acknowledges that. Yeah. It emphasizes that doubt is a normal part of the journey, not a sign of weakness. Okay. Remember, even Jesus' disciples struggled with doubt at times. That's true. Yeah. So how do we move through that doubt yeah. and maintain that sense of trust and partnership with God? One practical step is to simply acknowledge the doubt. Don't try to suppress it or pretend it's not there. <sighs> Bring it to God honestly and openly. So it's okay to say, God, I'm struggling to trust you right now. Absolutely. He can yeah. handle our honesty. Okay. In fact, he welcomes it. Okay. Another thing that can be helpful is to remind yourself of his faithfulness in the past. Like looking back at times when he answered our prayers or provided for us in unexpected ways. Exactly. Okay. Those memories can serve as anchors for our faith when we're feeling tossed about by doubt. Right. And don't underestimate the power of community. Yeah. Surround yourself with other believers who can offer support and encouragement when your faith feels shaky. It's like having a prayer support system. People who can remind us of God's goodness and faithfulness when we're struggling to see it ourselves. Mm. That's such a powerful reminder. Yeah. But I'm also curious, when we talk about prayer as a partnership, does it mean our prayers should always align with what we think God wants? Right. What if our desires and his plans are at odds? That's a really insightful question and gets to the heart of what it means to surrender to his will. Right. And that's something we can delve into further after a short break. So before the break, we were talking about aligning our desires with God's will. Right. Which feels like a huge key part of this partnership idea. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you feel a deep longing for something? Mm. You're praying for it with confidence and expectation. Right. But it seems like God's saying, not now yeah. or even no. Right. How do you reconcile that with this whole idea of bold prayer? That's a question many people grapple with, and the book offers a really insightful perspective. It suggests that sometimes our boldest prayers aren't about getting a specific outcome, okay. but about surrendering our own will to make space for God's. So it's not about trying to bend God's will to fit our desires. Right but about aligning our desires with his. Exactly. Oh. It's about recognizing that he sees the bigger picture, the intricate tapestry of our lives in a way that we simply can't. Okay. And sometimes what we think we want might not be what's best for us in the grand scheme of things. That's a humbling thought, but it makes sense. Yeah. We might be praying for a door to open when God is actually preparing us for something even greater. Right. Something we haven't even imagined. Precisely. Yeah. And that's where the transformative power of prayer really shines through. It's not just about changing our circumstances, but about allowing those circumstances to change us. So it's not just about getting what we want, but about becoming who we're meant to be. Mm -hmm. That reminds me earlier, we talked about the book discussing transformation through prayer. Yeah. What does that look like exactly? It's a process of spiritual growth and refinement that happens as we surrender our will to God's. Right. Think about it like this. <laughs> When you work with a skilled potter, okay. you allow them to mold the clay 
even if it means applying pressure or reshaping it in ways you might not initially understand. Because the potter knows the final form they're working towards, yeah. even if we don't. Exactly. In the same way as we surrender to God's shaping in our lives, okay. even through challenges and unanswered prayers, he's molding us into vessels of strength, resilience, and purpose. So even those no's or not now's mm. are part of his loving plan to shape us into who we're meant to be. Precisely. Okay. And that process of transformation can be painful at times, but it ultimately leads to greater freedom, joy, and fulfillment. This has been such an eye-opening conversation. We've covered so much ground from understanding the power of confidence and expectancy in prayer to embracing it as a partnership with God, even when his plans don't align with our own. It really has. What a journey. It truly is a lifelong journey. And this deep dive has only scratched the surface of what it means to engage in bold prayer. Right. But hopefully it's sparked a desire in you to explore your own prayer life more deeply. Absolutely. Yeah. And for anyone listening who feels that stark, that desire to experience this kind of transformative prayer life, what would you encourage them to do? Yeah. Where do they start? Start by simply talking to God. Okay. Share your heart with him honestly and openly, doubts and all. Yeah. Ask him to reveal himself to you more fully and to deepen your faith. And maybe even pick up a copy of Bold Prayers. Absolutely. It's a wonderful resource for anyone who wants to move beyond superficial prayers and experience the transformative power of truly connecting with God. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. For those listening, remember, your prayers are powerful. Mm. Don't be afraid to pray boldly, to expect great things, and to trust on the one who hears every word whispered from your heart. Amen to that. Until next time, keep seeking. Keep trusting and keep those prayers soaring. You've been listening to the Clarence Stores Leadership Podcast. Join us next time for more insights on becoming 1% better each day and leveling up in all areas of life.